Chapter 1. The world is always changing, and leaders need to be flexible enough to adapt. Leadership is a high calling because a lot of work is required from a leader if they are going to thrive and lead their organizations properly. One of the things that makes leadership so demanding is the fact that things are always changing, and this is especially true about the last two decades. So leaders have to be on the lookout for changes that may affect their organizations and adapt adequately. Leaders who fail to make this vital shift will almost always fail. The thing about change is that it happens rapidly, and no one has control over it. When change is imminent, you can't stop it. You can only adjust to it before it sweeps you off your feet. Leadership is all about the ability and willingness to make leadership changes that would positively enhance organizational and personal growth. John C. Maxwell Many leaders are afraid to make leadership changes because of the uncertainties that come with change. But this is where experience comes in. You can draw upon your experiences to know when the change you're about to make is an adaption, which is good, or it's just an attempt to conform, which is not good because conformity is sponsored by fear. But the experience doesn't have to be yours. You can learn from others and make proactive changes. Experience remains the best teacher. Learn to borrow from others when you don't have enough of it. In this summary, you have the chance to draw lessons on change from the leadership experience of John C. Maxwell, one of the most revered leadership coaches on the planet. Some of the major lessons to learn from this summary include Why organizational success is more important than personal success Strategies for becoming the best leader you can be How to always be a visionary leader no matter what's happening in the world How to create a leadership legacy that speaks of you years after you leave the organization And much more Did you know, leadership is not a dictionary word John Maxwell coined it himself it refers to the willingness and ability to make leadership changes when necessary. It conveys the idea that you're not loyal to processes. Once a process stops working for you or the organization you work in, you make a switch to something else that works. Chapter 2. Effective leaders understand that organizational success equals personal success. The way a leader thinks is different from how an average follower thinks. For non-leaders, success means achieving their goals and life mission all by themselves. Sure enough, people will contribute in some ways to their success, but the credit goes to them alone because it's all about them and their dreams, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when you're a leader with followers, you can't be thinking all about yourself and your personal interests. Your attitude will have to change. A good leader isn't one who climbs the success ladder alone, then lets the team figure out the way all by themselves. It's like transitioning from a soloist to a conductor. A soloist acts alone, thinks alone, and plays their instrument the way they like it. They can be successful all by themselves, but a conductor can't think about just themselves. The conductor's focus is on the orchestra and how to coordinate the other team members so that together they can produce amazing musical sounds. When making this sort of transition, there are realities you would have to face. For instance, you need to slow down your pace so that you can carry others along. This is tough because leaders naturally have an action bias, but it's the price you have to pay for corporate success. Recognize that you need others. It's far too common for you to think your followers need you more than you need them. That's not true. Realize that you need your followers just as they need you. You have weaknesses that they can make up for, in the same way as you possess strengths that can make up for their weaknesses. You need to make efforts to understand others. As earlier noted, being a leader means you stop thinking about yourself alone. That means you have to adjust such that you also consider the interests of your followers. You have to be intentional about this. Take the tango dance, for example. You can't lead the dance successfully without putting yourself in the follower's shoes and understanding how your actions might impact them. That's how leadership should be. Chapter 3. Change your focus from merely smashing your goals to growing your potential. The most important personal decision you can make is the decision to grow. Many leaders put all their energy into mastering the art of goal setting and achievement, but only a few have their focus on growth. Goals help you do better, but growth makes you a better person, so focus on growth. Here's why you should choose growth over goals. Achieving your goals helps you learn better ways of doing things, but committing to consistent growth will help you achieve your goals and make you a better person. It's like having your cake and eating it too. Growth-oriented leaders don't only seek to get more clients or sell more products only. That's actually a secondary goal. Their primary target is to produce better products so that customers would choose to come to them. You may not be in the manufacturing business, but this principle works in every sphere. 
When you focus on becoming a better person, your team becomes better too, and your output as a group improves. Don't forget that everything rises and falls on leadership. If the leader doesn't grow, the organization will be stunted. The reverse is also true. Some significant shifts to make in moving from goals to growth include Seek inward motivation, not outward motivation. If you base your inspiration on external factors like what your boss would think or on the strict policies in your organization, you won't go very far, especially in the face of challenges. But when your motivation comes from within, nothing can stop you. Be specific with your growth. Don't make the mistake of trying to grow every area of your life all at once. It's impossible. Pick only two or three areas and focus on developing them. Ideally, focusing on just one spot for a while works best. Resist the urge to have a growth timeline. Don't be impatient about growth. Some people can't wait to finish a leadership course before they start it. That's a wrong attitude towards growth. See the big picture instead and know that every action you take is a step in the process, not the end in itself. Don't have a growth finish line. Growth should be a lifelong value for you. Chapter 4 If you want to reach your leadership potential, you must be willing to change your focus from leadership perks to the price of leadership. Every leader is faced with two options almost on a daily basis. With every leadership decision they make, they have to choose to either focus on the perks of leadership or on adding value to the people they are leading. Leadership perks are those rewards that come with leadership. Titles, recognition, authority, honorary degrees, nice offices, good parking places, money, preferential treatment, and so on. These perks are enticing to anyone. There's no single leader who doesn't appreciate them. But you have to move from concentrating on them to making people your focus. Why should you make this important shift? It's because leadership is first and foremost about the people you're leading. The leaders who fail to put their followers first have already set themselves up for failure. Focusing your attention on the perks would make you the kind of leader who misuses people for selfish gains. And it wouldn't be long before your followers lose trust in you. The end result is that you will fail. If you're in the game for the long term, then there is no point rushing for the perks. Just focus your talents and energy on consistently providing massive value to your followers. And in due time, you will start reaping your rewards, the perks, and more. Leadership perks don't come to you simply because you have a leadership position. They are instead fruits of your leadership success. Most young leaders tend to go for the perks first. For many people, that's even their motivation for getting into leadership in the first place. But don't do that. Embrace the price for leadership. Leading people is no easy job. It's an uphill task that takes all you've got. Make up your mind right now to become the best leader you can be to the people you're currently leading or will lead in the future. Also, decide that you will do whatever it takes to become a good leader and a good example to your followers. Decide that you will walk the path to the top and not be the mediocre leader who tries to find a shortcut and will eventually not carry people along. Did you know, followers always ask three silent questions before committing to a leader. The questions are, do you care for me? Can I trust you? Can you help me? Come up with strategies to ensure your leadership answers positively to those silent questions. Chapter 5. Make the shift from being a trained leader to becoming a transformational leader. There are two types of leaders in the world, the trained leaders and the transformational leaders. The former only work with what they've learned from leadership training, but the latter choose to go the extra mile to use their creativity and wisdom to create change. Leadership is based on principles, so it's something that can be learned through training. But understand that leadership training is just the first step in becoming a leader. When you stop at the training level, you act solely on what you've learned from books, courses, conferences, and what have you. But transformational leadership begins when you move from a trained leader to the kind of leader who transforms the lives of followers through words and actions. If your actions inspire people to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, then you are a transformational leader. John C. Maxwell Transformational leaders don't just act from what they've read in books. They're always ready to make changes when the need arises. They aren't static or stuck with a single pattern of doing things. A transformational leader in the workplace isn't as concerned about the outputs of subordinates as much as training, motivating, and transforming their lives. Why do transformational leaders do this? It's because they understand results and are always inside out, not outside in. On the basis of this understanding, they seek to transform their subordinates from the inside so they can serve the company better. The desire to transform others is one leadership trait you should always have. Transformation starts with the leader and then overflows to the followers. 
so you can't expect to positively influence others when you're not transformed yourself. Therefore, the first step to being transformational in your leadership is to commit to being transformed yourself. We have said that the way to becoming transformational in your leadership is to not depend solely on what you learn from others. Although it's good to learn from mentors and people who have gone ahead of you, keep in mind that they don't know it all. Even if they do, your situation is unique, so not every lesson you need can be learned from others. Keep an open mind and be highly curious. These are two traits that will enable you to transform your mind and that of the people around you. Chapter 6 Leadership and abundance require that you leave your comfort zone. Every individual falls into one of four different zones when it comes to being active and innovative. Below are the four zones, along with the attitude statements that represent them. The coasting zone. I do not go the extra mile. I do as little as possible. The comfort zone. I do what I have always done. I don't need to go through stress. The challenge zone. I go the extra mile. I take steps to do what I haven't done before. The creative zone. I think of new innovations and I attempt to think what I have never thought before. Examine yourself. Which zone do you naturally tend towards? Do you live in the coasting zone, the comfort zone, the challenge zone, or the creative zone? You may have a natural zone, but you have the ability to improve yourself by choosing a different zone. Of the zones listed above, the last is the best to be in because it is where you can think big and dig deeper into the knowledge of how to become better and expand your potential. If you want to make fast and tangible progress or take your leadership to higher levels, you need to take a bold step and make the shift from maintaining the status quo. You can shift to creativity and abundance by eliminating the mental blocks that usually limit many humans. Those mental blocks include finding the right answer, thinking that certain things are not logical. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. Albert Einstein Following the rules most groundbreaking knowledge comes from breaking the rules. Avoiding ambiguity. Life itself is complex, so this can't be avoided. Seeing failure as bad. Failure is not bad. It is your friend, and creative people don't avoid failure. Trying to avoid being different or looking foolish, creative and successful people stand out in the crowd. Thinking you are not creative, every human is born with the natural instincts to be creative. What differentiates those who became known is their persistence and ability to learn and leave their comfort zone. Conclusion Effective leaders understand and embrace the dynamic nature of leadership and consequently are able to make leader shifts when necessary. You can't expect to last long in the game if you're resistant to change. This is why you must sustain the ability to see farther than others and act before everyone else. One powerful key to staying ahead like this is to become a lifelong learner. Don't let the busyness of your leadership position keep you from seeking wisdom and observing changes happening both in your industry and around the world. It's worthy of note that great leaders do not just have followers. So somewhere in your career, your goals should shift from leading followers to building leaders. You won't always be on the scene, that's a fact. And when you're out, you need people who have the capacity to both sustain and develop what you have built as a leader. If you fail to raise these kinds of people, your work will suffer because there will be no capable hands to maintain it. Keep this at the back of your mind as you grow in leadership. Remember that leaders are not in the short-term game. They are in for the long haul, so raising successors is extremely important. 7 Steps to Success by John C. Maxwell Make a commitment to grow daily. Value the process more than events. Don't wait for inspiration. Be willing to sacrifice pleasure for opportunity. Dream big. Plan your priorities. Give up to go up. Try this. Every leader has an action bias. Since they tend to see things before others do, they tend to act and leave their followers behind. But we need to change that. Start today to cultivate the skill of carrying others along. You want to be in the position where you're a step ahead so you can lead effectively, but you're also still very close to your followers. You want to be able to hear their cries and see their struggles, while at the same time being behind them to pat their backs when they feel discouraged. Leadership is indeed a high calling, but the rewards are enormous.